Well, it looks like we are going back to Hogwarts. I thought I would just hop on here and give you my thoughts on the announcement and sort of go over the pros and the cons, because me personally, I think there are a lot of both. I have of course wanted a reboot for Harry Potter for a very long time, I've been open about that, as I tweeted out the idea a few years ago and more recently made a dedicated video on my personal pitch, which actually predicted that there would be 7 seasons, one for each book. The first thing that I'll talk about about this big announcement is the trailer we got. It plays the classic Harry Potter theme song, it has the same Harry Potter text font, and it has the same castle layout. I'm assuming they just did this for the views and also because it was easier than making a whole new look, but if they stick with these three things, the castle design, music, and text font, it's going to be a problem. They need to make this show as different from the original 8 movies as they can, because they are going to be held to a massive standard. The Harry Potter movies are some of the most well-loved adaptations, and it hasn't been that long since they came out. It's inevitable that people are going to compare this show to the movies, which is why they need to do everything to make sure that happens as little as possible, and that means a total rebrand. Just a thought I had, it might be cool if they went with the Hogwarts Legacy Castle, because they added and changed all sorts of things for that game. So that proves that it is possible to make a castle separate from what the films did, even though it is so iconic in the movies. Now, one of the biggest things we have to talk about is the cast. Daniel, Rupert, and Emma are everybody's definitive Harry, Ron, and Hermione, whether it's watching the movies or reading the books. When we read the books, we all now picture those three actors. Rupert Grin actually had a really interesting statement where he said everybody except him pictures him as Ron, but he still sees Ron as he saw him when he read the books originally. Whenever I read the books now, I don't see myself as Ron. It's weird. I've, always, I've still got my same... When I was kind of... Before any of the films, it was kind of my own imagination. and uh, Everyone else has replaced, replaced my kind of imagination, but, um, except for me. It's going to be next to impossible for them to replace those three, even if those three don't entirely look like their book counterparts. Ron is leaner, taller, and has a ton more freckles. Hermione is actually sort of ugly in the book, while Emma Watson is beautiful. And Harry's hair is messier, and he has green eyes. They of course tried to give him green eyes on the first day of shooting, but Daniel didn't react well to the contacts. What they need to do for this reboot is make their actors look as book accurate as possible. I really think that's the only way that this new cast stands a chance. Now this might mean that animation is the way to go and they just get voice actors. I think this would be very beneficial because one, they could make sure they look exactly like their book counterparts. Two, going down the animation route would make it so different from the original 8 movies that it would take a lot of the pressure of being compared off. And three, it would mean they could age the kids naturally over the seven seasons, and also they wouldn't have to work with a bunch of child actors all in one room. This would also help a great deal when replacing Maggie Smith as McGonagall, and the passed on Alan Rickman as Snape, and Robbie Coltrane as Hagrid. They are iconic in these roles as well, and like the trio, they're almost irreplaceable, even though again, they don't actually look entirely like their book counterparts, especially Snape, who was supposed to be much younger. Animation has a lot of pros when looking at it. Now, do I think they're going to go down the animation route? No, I don't. I think they want this to be live action, but my hope is that they at least consider animation. Now, one of the biggest things I want to talk about is the Harry Potter universe. When I pitched my 7 season reboot, I meant for that to be 10 years in the future, giving us at least 20 years between the films and the reboot. This is because they are telling the exact same story that the films are, which might get repetitive. A good example of this is The Amazing Spider-Man. People didn't like Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man movie as much as Tobey Maguire's because it was too soon, and just as I've been saying throughout the video, people compared it to the original Spider-Man movies too much. Harry Potter faces the same problem, and my idea to fix this is again to be as accurate to the book as you can. Dive deep into the Harry Potter books and make sure you cover every single thing that the films left out. This is actually what I did with my Life of Harry Potter videos that made this channel take off. I focused much more on the things that the movies did not cover for each character, knowing that people who clicked on the video were already Harry Potter fans, meaning most had already seen the movies, but a lot had not read the book. I knew that they would click off if I was just telling the story that the movies told, so I doubled down and put extra emphasis on plot lines the novels covered but the movies didn't. That's exactly what HBO Max needs to do with this series. They need to make sure that they have as many new things as possible when compared to the original movies, otherwise people will say it's too similar. While this might seem like a con because it makes their job almost impossible, 
I actually see this as a pro because we get to see so many things come to life on the screen. We can see things that the movies didn't cover like the Midnight Duel, the Marauders backstory, the Quidditch World Cup, the Weasley is our King song, seeing St. Mungo's, the Wizarding Hospital in London, all of the missing Voldemort memories which was one of my favorite parts of the series, Gryffindor winning the Quidditch Cup in the 3rd, 5th, and 6th films, the kids just being kids at a magical boarding school that the films didn't have enough time to really convey, and more than anything, a faithful retelling of Ron, Ginny, and Hermione's characters, who Steve Clovis, the screenwriter for most of the movies, royally screwed up, all because he had a weird obsession with Hermione and wanted Hermione and Harry to be together. These are things that will lead to a successful reboot, either focusing on the things that the movies left out or fixing the things that the movies messed up. Seeing Ginny, who was actually super popular, confident, absolutely beautiful, and who isn't on cringeworthy awkwardness levels is something I would love to see on screen because the movies messed that up so much. And the same goes for Ron and Hermione. Hermione might actually be portrayed as sort of ugly and not like this goddess that the movies made her, and her friendship with Harry might actually be accurate to the book, making it more of a brother-sister relationship rather than a couple relationship. And maybe this time around, Ron won't have all of his good moments taken from him and given to Hermione. All of these things are massive pros for this series because they can fix so much. Now the logistics of the series. HBO Max announced the rebrand the other day, now going by the name Max, dropping the HBO part. And this Harry Potter show is 100% the poster child of this rebrand for them. HBO Max has already shown that they are good at adapting big franchises with House of the Dragon, so I'm very happy that this went to them and not Netflix, who has messed up a few projects. Now is this a cash grab? Yes, it is 100% a cash grab, both for HBO Max and for JK Rowling. We've already seen that Rowling is willing to ruin her work for a cash grab, as she tweeted out that the god-awful Cursed Child plotline is canon, even though it was the worst thing to happen to the Wizarding World. My hope is that even though this is a cash grab, they put the same love and care into it that they put into Hogwarts Legacy. The creators of that game had true passion for the world of Harry Potter, and they told a very compelling story expanded the Wizarding World, and made new aspects of the Wizarding World, all without the help of JK Rowling. With this news coming to light, someone DM'd me on Instagram and asked me if this is what I would do if I had the rights to Harry Potter. The answer to that is no. I would not make a reboot, I would make a spin-off. The spin-off I would make would not be something like Fantastic Beasts though. As much as I'd like those movies, that was not the direction the franchise should have gone. I would make a spin-off series about either the Marauders, the four founders of Hogwarts, maybe one about Mad-Eye and his days as an Auror, and a few other things that I mentioned in my pitch for the video, which I'll link below. But I would definitely focus on characters we're familiar with, not a magic zoologist who had literally one mention in the entirety of the massive seven books. But that leads me to another pro that this series could bring on. This series could lead to a bunch of spin-offs, which again is something that I mentioned in my pitch video. I said that the original show should be 7 seasons, and from that, they expand and add spin-offs. At the same time though, I really don't want Harry Potter to become saturated much like the Star Wars universe, and even now with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. There's definitely a balance that needs to be maintained, which I get is really, really hard, but if they can do what the Hogwarts Legacy creators can do, I think that I have hope that they can do it here. So my final thoughts. I'm both excited, but also sort of nervous about what's to come. As I went over my thoughts, there are a lot of pros, and there are also a lot of cons. I think it would be awesome to have some of the Hogwarts Legacy team put into this project, because they have proven time and time again throughout that entire game that they know Harry Potter like the back of their hand. Being a YouTube channel that covers mostly Harry Potter, this series is obviously very exciting for me as a content creator. One of the favorite comments I got on my Hogwarts Legacy videos where I just watched it live and pointed out easter eggs was that I was a Harry Potter encyclopedia with all of my knowledge. Which really, I am. It's crazy. That's why I'm super excited for the show because I can break down each episode, point out all the easter eggs and break down everything giving you guys all my Potter knowledge. That makes me ecstatic and so excited for what's to come. I'm gonna leave my thoughts there, but please leave a comment below giving your thoughts on the reboot. What do you think? Are there more pros? Are there more cons? I would love to hear you guys' thoughts. That's all I have for you guys today though, so I will see you in the next video. 
Thank you so much for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. You can follow me on Instagram to see more of my personal life like my cute dog Loki and some behind the scenes movie flame stuff. I also do similar content on TikTok and Twitter that I do here on this channel, so if you like what I do here, check them out. All the handles are right below me and links are in the description. Over here are my wonderful patrons. If you want to be featured on the next video plus get a few other perks, become a patron today. As always, if you liked the video, hit that like button and subscribe and look out for more great movie flame videos on the way.